In this tutorial, we will cover the steer operations found in the specialty suite of tools. Let's begin with the steer from path tool. Using the vector line tool, we first draw a path on which we shall generate the stair. With the stair from path tool, click on the path, and a stairway is generated from the vector line. As the stairway is still in edit mode, we're able to edit it graphically with the on-screen controls. But there are more options for the stair in the tool options palette. We shall cover some of them, and you can try the rest on your own. Within the options tab at the top, there are six icons representing different types of stairs. And the first is solid stair. Our stair was generated with this method, the default option. The second type is beam stair, and observe that as we click on the option, our stair changes. The third type is labeled steps only. Select it and observe the result. And here we try steps and risers, the fourth option. We can turn our stair into a solid ramp with the fifth type, and a beam ramp with the sixth type. The second of the three layout icons, named Continuous, is the default option. If we switch to top view, we can easily observe the difference between the three layout variations. Here we have Continuous, Per Section, and with Landings. Recall a moment ago that we were able to edit the dimensions of the stairs graphically using the on-screen controls. We can do the same numerically using the width and height fields located in the center of the tool options palette. Here we enter 3 feet for the stair width and 15 feet for its height. Also in the tool options palette is the align pull-down menu. So far our stairway has been centered in respect to the path from which it's derived. Available are the options to align the stair to the left of the path or to the right of the path, as well as the option to completely reverse the direction of the stair. Within the Tiles and Sides tab of the Tool Options palette, we can add a ledge to each of the steps by clicking inside the Width Tiles box. Notice the numeric fields display a default value of 2 inches. We can adjust to dimensions of the tiles here with numeric input. Here we enter 1 inch in each of the fields. Observe the result. Third in the Tool Options palette for the Stairs from Path tool is the Railings tab. Once we click the Railings checkbox inside the tab, notice the railings on each side of the stairway are generated. Also notice the Railings tab is further subdivided into two categories that allow us to edit the actual handrail as well as the columns with which they're supported. Available are the options to construct the handrails and or columns as lines, which is the default, or a square shape as we show here with the rail, and here we give the columns a circular shape. Spiral stairs in the specialty suite is another method for generating stairs. Unlike the stair from path tool in the previous example, this tool creates a spiral stair with a single click at any location in the project window. Similar to the stair from pad tool shown previously, on-screen controls exist to further edit the dimensions of the revolved stair. Likewise, if we take a look at the tool options palette for the revolved stair, you will notice many of the same options exist as do for the stair from path. Within the step width category, we enter 5 feet in the inside radius field and 10 feet in the outside radius field. Notice we do so, the width field automatically adjusts accordingly. Next we enter 20 feet in the total height and 1 foot in the riser height. Finally we enter 720 in the total angle field. Observe the result. What if we want specific number of steps within the spiral stairway? Here we check the number of steps option and enter 40 within the field. To highlight more of the options inside this tab, let's check the Step Angle field in the Link Control category and enter 30. Note the changes. And here we go back and select the Step Width option and enter 2 feet and reverse the direction of the stair. Similar to the Stair from Path tool, notice similar options within the remaining tabs. Here we add some tiles 
and a railing to the revolve stair. We have yet to mention that we're able to edit the railings with numeric input. Observe here as we change the dimensions of the rails. We enter 3 inches for the X and Z fields. And now for the columns. Let's enter 1 inch and 3 inches. We want a higher rail, so we enter 3 feet 6 inches for the height. And we enter 8 inches in the distance from edge field to move the rails closer and away from the edge. The third stair tool lets you create a set of switchback stairs from a source rectangle. Select the switchback stair tool, then click on any 2D rectangle or any rectangular face on a 3D object. The switchback stair parameters can be edited both dynamically and numerically, similar to the other two types of stairs previously described. This concludes the stair tutorial.